Hi, I'm John Rose. I'm taping this on 5-31-2023. Hoping to publish this tomorrow, which will be my 33rd anniversary. That is my 33rd raw vegan anniversary. That's right. As of tomorrow, it will be 33 years when I finally found a library of knowledge that makes a little bit of sense. Everything else is confusing. Nothing makes sense when you don't have the right piece of the puzzle. I found that 33 years ago. Been very passionate ever since. I like to think I've been in school ever since, reading as much as I can on everything related to food, nutrition, and since that's the biggest piece of the puzzle on this planet, I want to know about everything else on this planet. Because everything revolves around what we eat. Everything revolves around what we think about what we eat. The problem with we humans is our belief system. We lost knowledge a long time ago. Our ancestors made a mistake. They fell in love with it. They got addicted to it. And what they do? They did what all addicts do. They ran to the Nile so they didn't have to face that reality. And that's what allowed them to pass it on down to their children. We've been doing that for 3,000 generations. Now, there's more confusion around the subject of nutrition than any other subject, and that's ridiculous because it's not confusing whatsoever. Once you read the user's manual, that's right, there is a user's manual. It clearly tells us what to eat. I'm not here telling you what to eat. No ideology is telling you what to eat. Your body, your anatomy is telling you what to eat. Read the user's manual. Our body clearly indicates what we're supposed to eat, just like every animal's body indicates what it's supposed to eat. Look around the world at every living system out here, all these animals, We've got about a dozen anatomical characteristics that clearly determines whether or not we're going to be in this class over here, the carnivores, or this class, the omnivores, or this one, the grainivores, or the herbivores, or the frugivores, the primates. What do we think we are? We are primates. Our anatomy clearly tells us what we're designed to eat. And yet there's so much confusion around this subject because we're sick and we're in denial. Our belief system is all screwed up. Can't trust our experts. We prey upon ourselves. Again, we have the wrong belief system. That creates the wrong mentality, the wrong behavior. And it's all because we stopped eating biophotons and we stopped eating our species-specific diet long ago. And yet, when people switch to a carnivore diet or paleo diet, or a low carb diet, some seem to get results, don't they? And that confuses most of us because very few people have figured everything out the way I have to make it simple. You see, I've realized that we're making five main dietary mistakes made based on five things we mastered and we made bad applications. It's not any more complicated to that than that. The bad applications when we applied it to our food. Let's work backwards with these five mistakes. Again, 33 years ago, I read this book called Are You Confused? And it explained these mistakes, not as explicitly as I'm going to explain it to you, but they pointed out that the problem, the problem of humanity has to do with our diet. If you look at the last big mistake we made based on the last main thing we mastered, that would be the chemicals, chemical revolution in the 1940s. Bad application started growing our food on artificial fertilizer, started spraying them with pesticides, and now we got genetically modified foods. And now food is a weapon system that's used against us. And one of the biggest problems when we make that fifth mistake, when we eat food that's not organically grown on fertile soil without pesticides, is we don't end up with enough biophotons. Again, the, the problem we face as a species, it's our belief system. We think it's okay to make these five mistakes and lose these biophotons. And that means instead of having six strong senses like we're supposed to, we only have five and a small fraction. That's the problem with humanity. So five main mistakes, the chemical revolution, growing our food on artificial fertilizers and spraying pesticides, 
It's magic. The powers that be think of themselves as magicians. Look at this, folks. It looks like food, but it's not. You get five times more by photons when you don't do that fifth mistake. Fourth mistake, my God, the industrial revolution, processed foods. Now we got ultra processed foods. When people quit making that mistake, their health goes up big time, doesn't it? You can design dozens and dozens of dietary programs that eliminate that fourth mistake, and that would include the carnivore diet, which is the second mistake, just by eliminating those processed foods. But that's only two of these five mistakes. The third mistake has to do with the industrial revolution, or the agricultural revolution. So when we started eating plants, we're not biologically are designed to eat. We have adapted to them, we're not designed for them. Some people have adapted better to certain foods, which is why they can make that mistake and not have certain problems other people do. But it doesn't make them impervious to that mistake. So one reason why the paleo diet is so successful for so many people is they cut out those last three mistakes. And a lot of people, when they go to the paleo diet, they mistakenly think it's a meat-based diet. It's not. It's mostly plant-based. These people in the paleo days were scavengers. They, they, they ate whatever they could whenever they could. And they didn't live very long either. It wasn't a good life. It's not a diet we want to model our diet after. And yet you hear people who say, I, I had these problems and I went to a carnivore diet. I just ate nothing but meat. I'm making the second mistake. See, this is the second main thing we mastered, which was only made possible because of the very first thing we mastered, which was fire. That's the biggest mistake of all. If we didn't make that mistake, we wouldn't be making those other four mistakes. Once we mastered fire, all of a sudden man became king of the jungle because every animal knows to be afraid of fire. They smell it and they run. We're foolish. We think we mastered it. Five things we mastered, we mastered the fire. We think we mastered it, but it's the unwise use of fire that's the reason why we live in hell right now today. Why? Because once you cook your food, once you kill the food, there are no more biophotons in that plant or animal or fungus, whichever one you're going to be eating. And now you're going to feel disconnected. Now you're going to prey upon your own species. You're going to have the wrong mentality. You're going to have an exchange mentality instead of a gift mentality. You're going to have a dark side, side to your behavior that you didn't have before. And that's because of those biophotons. And then when you start eating the animals, that just darkened the dark side of our behavior. Look at the historians like Herodotus. They all pointed out that the plant-eating nations surpassed the meat-eating nations in every area except two. And these grain-eating nations were still making a mistake, but they did better than the meat-eating nations they didn't have these warlike tendencies that the meat eaters do and they weren't obsessed with sex otherwise the even the grain eating nations they surpassed the meat eating nations in all the other areas of art and poetry and everything else but that carnivore diet appears to work for a lot of people because when you make five main mistakes you end up with hundreds of thousands of problems Okay, let's not make the last three mistakes, or let's not make this mistake. Look how many problems go away. Do you know when you can put, they did a study with children that were labeled ADHD, simply stop giving them these poisoned foods, put them on organic food instead of conventional food, and 50% of them behave better just by not making that fifth mistake. Oh my God, that's all we have to do. Just correct one mistake. No, you gotta correct them all. But if you correct two mistakes, you cut out the processed foods. Oh my God, this disease went away and this disease went away. And this warning sign, and this symptom went away. All these things went away. So that, therefore, I must be, these three mistakes are the things we should do. No, we're still making mistakes. So you hear people that are struggling and they're having problems and they stumble upon a carnivore diet where I'm now I'm only going to eat animals. Very few of them are eating them raw, so now they're eating cooked, so it's still making two mistakes. And yet, you hear testimonies of people who've made these dietary uh, transitions, and they got rid of a lot of problems. Yes, 
Five mistakes, get rid of all of them and it changes everything. Get rid of a few, it's gonna change a lot. But it's not gonna change enough. We have to understand the effects of that very first mistake. And that's what I learned 33 years ago. Once I found this knowledge, I've been obsessed with it. It's, it's obsessed my life for the last 33 years. That's all I think about is how to help people understand the role they play in getting out of the hell we created, both individually and collectively. And collectively right now, we're like a bunch of crabs inside of a container and they're not letting us out of this container. We gotta learn to cooperate. We gotta learn the value of eating by a photon so that we feel the oneness with everything around us. Once you bump up these biophotons and once you flush out that serpent that Victor Hugo referred to as far as this waste matter because we're not eating the right foods, it takes your life to another level. It changes your mentality. It's hard to explain until you experience it. But once you do experience it, you realize that you are one with everything, you appreciate everything around you, and you can't help but think, how can I make my life better? It's only one way. It's to make everything around me better. I wanna make this better and that better, and you better, and you better, and you better. And that's what we're supposed to be doing. Make this planet better. We've got the wrong mentality. We have this exchange mentality where we're competing for resources, when we live on an abundant planet, we should be cooperating and sharing the abundance that this planet has to offer. Think about what kind of world that would be like if everyone got up and thought, how can I make the life, this life better? Hey, let's go down to the river. My family's been working there for centuries and making it the best beautiful swim park there is. Well, I'm a great singer. I'm a great actor. Let's go around and entertain people. That's how we spend our days. The wrong mentality. And yet you hear people talk about a resource-based economy. But you can't tell people to do that. You, gotta, you can't do it intellectually. It's got to be done by bumping up that sixth sense. Remember, we've got five and a fraction senses. We have to bump up that sixth sense so we understand this gift mentality, this concept that the more I give, the more I receive. Think about it. Everyone you see is giving, 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 and you're just receiving, 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 receiving. That's what this life is supposed to be like. It's an illusion. We're sick. The sickest of the sickest of us are keeping us where we are. They're the ones that are controlling everything. Remember what Plato said, those who tell the stories rule society. He also said, this and no other is the root from which a tyrant springs. When he first appears, he is a protector. Compare those two quotes with H.L. Mencken. The urge to save humanity is almost always only a false face for the urge to rule it. The whole aim of practical politics is to keep the populace alarmed and hence clamorous to be led to safety. With an endless series of hobgoblins, all of them imaginary. Now let's go to Goethe. None are more hopelessly enslaved than those who falsely believe they are free. The truth has been kept from their minds by masters who rule them with lies. The, the, they, they feed them on falsehood till wrong looks like right in their eyes. And I'll finish up with John Adams. Two ways to conquer and enslave a nation. One is by the sword, the other is by debt. So that's the problem we have right now on our planet. We have Masters ruling us with, with lies. They're creating imaginary hobgoblins to scare us. So we'll accept their solution, which is really the problem. How can I say this without getting in too much trouble? They claim there's something that starts with a V that's causing all of our problems. And their solution is another V. In reality, the first V is just an imaginary hobgoblin. And it's the second V that's the real first V. You follow me? Because the first V simply means poisons. You're being tricked, being hoodwinked by these tricky, sick psychopaths 
con artists, magicians. They're just making up imaginary hobgoblins and we fall for it because we're so superstitious. And when you believe in things that you don't understand, then you will suffer. Superstition ain't the way. It's not supposed to be, but it is on this planet. How did Will Durant say that? Religions are born and may die, but superstition is immortal? What's wrong with humanity? There's something wrong with us. Our belief system, it's been bombarded with bullshit. We got too many references that believe that there's something else that's causing our problems. We're so superstitious, we're quick to blame our mistakes and the problems they cause on anything but ourselves, even if it's invisible. It's an imaginary hobgoblin. It's, it did it. Get it, get it, get it. Oh, yeah, we got a solution for you. I want to be your protector. I traded these imaginary hobgoblins just so I could be your protector. Don't you see what's happening to us, folks? Plato understood all of this. Whatever deceives men seems to produce a magical enchantment. That's Plato. He also knew how to feed the body. He understood how fasting works. Read the ethics of diets. Better yet, read the foreword to the ethics of diet by Tolstoy, who translated the ethics of diet into Russian and wrote this 25 page essay called The First Step. I'll put a link down below in the description box to the video I did, The First Step to Paradise, where I took that 25 page essay and I broke it down, where Tolstoy understood the problem. He equated humanity to a, a two-story house. First floor is an evil floor. It's the, it's the evil life, and we're addicted to the evil way of life. And what's humanity's problem? We're a bunch of gluttons. So Tolstoy said, all we think about is food, food, food. The ethics of diet. He translated this book, 85 of the greatest thinkers in the world, people like Plato, Pythagoras. What'd they say? There's a relationship between our diet and what we do and our behavior. So we're on the first floor. It's an evil world. We're addicted to the evil life. And there are steps that take us up to the second floor, the good life. But the steps are sequential. You can't skip them. And that's what we're doing. Got to start with the first step. Tolstoy's first step had to do with self-control. Christians call it self-renunciation. His first step was a solid food vacation on water to take back control of things controlling us. We're a bunch of gluttons. I, too, created a, a three-step process. Long ago, before I read this essay, my first step is the same as Tolstoy's. It, too, is a solid food vacation, but it's on juices. Because nowadays, we have to modify what we used to do as the best preparation for a better way of life. Might even have to modify our species-specific diet slightly. And I explain that in all of my other videos. So be sure to check out my channels. I'll put links down below to my other uh, channels. And you always want to start off, if you haven't done this yet, to make some sense out of all of this, take a solid food vacation, put links down below. I guarantee you, folks, when you finally take that solid food vacation, you're in for a treat.